I'm Edie Lush and I'm here in the Hub Culture Pavilion in Davos. Very pleased to be joined by Mickey Susaka. Thanks so much Thank for you. coming. Thank you for having S me. Senior Partner and Managing Director, Global Leader, Marketing and Sales Practices for uh, BCG. Tell me how, it's your third time here? How did you get here? It's a three-peat. Um, I was a beneficiary of the policy that the WEF implemented three years ago. Um, some people know, not many that that year was the first year where corporate sponsors can bring the CEO plus three direct reports mm -hmm. and one more slot if it were a woman. I did not know this when the CEO invited me actually to come. Mm -hmm. I thought somebody had canceled right. and I got the lucky draw to come. Right. And I realized that was the first year was implemented where in the world where half the population is women, the WEF was single digits percentage women. Mm -hmm. There was progress and I had mixed feelings about female quotas, whether in the workplace or government or whatnot. But I was delighted and I've benefited from that since and this is my third time and I'm delighted I'm here and I'm actually now for quotas because <laughs> uh, it, it produces the right outcomes even though right. you don't like it as the European Vice Commissioner said today as well. Mm -hmm. tell, well tell me about some of the, you've been going to some interesting sessions, so gender parity, mm -hmm. what, was your, what was the thought there? Well I think the WEF has invested an enormous amount in figuring out uh, this journey we have a long ways to go. Uh, there's a report that you've all just put out uh, of 150 countries or so. Japan, which is where I'm based now, mm -hmm. is 101. Uh, it's not a good place to mm -hmm. be. But the session that we were at today talked mostly about the data and the findings, the rankings, and I think the rankings force interesting conversations no matter where you are on the ranking list. If you're at the bottom of the list, mm -hmm. like Japan, mm -hmm. it creates a sense of urgency. If you are in Iceland mm -hmm. or even in the U.S., you say, well, wow, we've made a lot of progress, mm -hmm. but we've actually stagnated in certain places. You know, corporate board memberships in the U.S. have been flat, despite the fact that the U.S. is high on the leagues. And so I think everybody felt there's more to do. And countries like ourselves, uh, on the bottom part of the list, I think there's much more to do. So it was energizing that all of us mm -hmm. uh, in that group felt like we all had something to do, make some positive noise, be impatient, and uh, frankly, be responsible and do something about it. So I'm really interested in the idea of quotas because I think that it's one of the issues that um, is a very clear thing you, that you can do. Mm -hmm. And when you do it, as you say, it has an impact which immediately mm -hmm. <laughs> makes a difference. Mm -hmm. And whether or not you like quotas, I mean, I, when I was going applying to university, um, I felt sort of unfairly mm. Um, I wasn't getting, and then actually when I got to college, I thought, well, now I see why. Mm -hmm. You know, I really do understand. Um, why don't we see more quotas being implemented? Well, I think you first have to recognize that you have a problem, mm -hmm. and that quota certainly is one stick to kind of kick things around to make things happen. If you don't even have the awareness that you have a problem, the, the notion of quotas being a solution doesn't even come up. Mm -hmm. Once it does, then you have to set it at the right level. And quotas for quotas' sake is never going to work. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want to be the token woman on the board. You don't want right. to be the token manager in an organization. You don't want to be the token student that got in mm -hmm. just because you had a skirt. But I think the theme of the Gender Parity Task Force, as well as a terrific discussion today around uh, women and decision making and overall leadership in mm -hmm. business, um, it is quotas, but with a equal amount of scrutiny around the quality of the person that deserves that seat. Mm -hmm. So just being, you know, just having a skirt's not enough. Mm -hmm. You got to be a good skirt, right? <laughs> and, you know, if you have a good skirt and a good pants guy, right. girl and boy, uh -huh. then the notion is, all right, that is actually an opportunity mm -hmm. to then make the decision that if you're equally qualified, a little bit of extra support and a spotlight in helping out the quota and achieving those goals is the right approach. What were the, some of the thought comments that you heard from Christine Lagarde, for example? She was terrific, as always. Mm -hmm. um, a couple things. One is the notion that, uh, like many, we grow up in a man's society. University, you know, in many countries, more than 60% of students are women. Our grades are better. And yet, to get up there, you are often in a uh, man's world, boy's world. She grew up in a family of boys mm -hmm. and brothers. And so you start your life, uh, as she did, kind of elbowing your way through. And she started... Um, talking a lot about how that's how she kind of got to where she is mm -hmm. to make that noise to dare to challenge um, the status quo and make sure you're heard and Sheryl Sandberg was also there and mm -hmm. she's 
it was fabulous as well. Mm -hmm. And she talked about um, there were these T-shirts, I guess, she saw in the United States for girls and boys. And the boys' T-shirt was around being smart like dad. Mm -hmm. And the girls' T-shirt was about being pretty like mom. Right. And that's a the real problem. problem. Yeah. And so it starts very early. It's all mm. kind of in our subconscious, different cultures, obviously. The U.S. versus Japan versus the Arab states. Mm -hmm. We all have different cultural norms, but I think so much of it is conditioned in the way both men and women grow up. And so the whole um, statement from the panel was around, let's recognize that. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about it, and let's make sure we can overcome it. But we at least need to talk about the things that we grew up with and... Um, Consciously or subconsciously, the, the uh, biases perhaps we, we have about each other. You know, when a woman is aggressive, she's um, whatever, the B word. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and when a man yeah. is aggressive, it's a great thing, and it's yeah. celebrated. So, um, I mean, Davos for everyone, I think, is a really energizing few days. Mm -hmm. It's exhausting in many ways because yeah. there's so much to do and so, yeah. much, so many people to meet and all this. Uh, food for the th soul and brain mm -hmm. and everything else, but um, it was certainly inspiring. Mickey, thank you so much for taking the time to come into the pavilion thank here. Thank you very much. And I'm Edie Lush. Oh.